dear students let me today present the second video which i promised yesterday to cover my today's lecture uh, i will resume uh, my face to face teaching from next week as i am busy on a domestic uh, involvement okay so let's go back to where where we left in the previous lecture from the book by ali umar and uh, let me repeat equation 8.24 this is a very important equation because in a dielectric medium uh, there are several fields present inside and outside of the solid uh, the total field e local consists of four electric fields e not where e not is the external field that is the externally applied field e1 the field due to the polarization charges lying at the external surfaces of the sample and e2 is the field due to the polarization charges lying on the surface of the lorentz sphere so you must make note down the difference between e1 and e2 uh, e3 is the field due to other dipoles lying within the sphere uh, note that the part of the medium between the sphere and the external surface surface does not contribute anything else in the electric field in effect the volume polarization charges compensate each other resulting in a zero net charge on this region okay the figure 8.5 uh, facing you uh, explains and illustrates these various fields very clearly so here is a sphere of uh, uh, a certain solid and uh, it placed in an external electric field so this is the applied field d not between these two polar surfaces and then we have the field e1 uh, which is the field between uh, this uh, side of the sphere and this side of the sphere on the surface and e2 is the field due to this polarization and uh, similarly e3 is the field which is uh, not shown here but it is very clear this is the field so you must also uh, concentrate on figure b as well uh, in figure a the procedure for computing the local field in figure b the procedure for calculating e2 the field due to the polarization charges on the surface of the current sphere so let us now evaluate these various fields which appeared above e1 this field due to polarization charges on the external surface is also known as the depolarization field since it is obviously opposed to the external field the value of this field depends on the geometrical shape of the external surface and for the simple case of an infinite slab it is given by e1 is equal to minus 1 over epsilon naught into capital p which you may confirm by using gauss's law the depolarization field for other geometrical shapes can also be found in the reference kitto uh, 1971 as well as in the problems okay the field e2 the polarization charges on the surface of the lorentz cavity may be considered as forming a continuous distribution recall that the cavity is larger whose density is minus p cos theta the field due to charges at the point located at the center of the sphere is uh, according to coulomb's law given by this expression e2 is equal to integral equation 8.26 you must uh, try to understand the contents of this equation where the additional factor cos theta is included 
because we are in effect evaluating only the component of the field along the direction of P. Other components vanish by symmetry. Uh, and the factor 2 pi r square sin theta d theta is the surface element along the sphere. See figure 8.5b, this figure I, which I mentioned. So here this uh, surface, uh, the shaded surface is given by uh, this equation 2 pi r square sin theta d theta is the surface element along the sphere. Integration of equation 8.26 leads to the simple result that E2 is equal to 1 over 3 epsilon naught into P, a field in the same direction as the external field. E3, the field which is due to other dipoles in the cavity may be evaluated by summing the fields of the individual dipoles using equation 8.2. The result obtained depends on the crystal structure of the solid under consideration, but for the case of a cubic structure it may readily be shown that the sum vanishes that is E3 is equal to 0, as the reader will ask will be asked to show in the problem section. In other structures the dipole fields E3 may not vanish and it should then be included in the rest of the discussion. If the various fields are now substituted in equation 8.25 uh, and simplified, the local field comes out to be equal to E naught minus 2 over 3 epsilon naught P. So equation 8.29 will be used in various situations. And further, we may compare the value of E local obtained above with that of E in equation 8.8. .8. We discover that E local is E plus 1 over 3 epsilon naught P, uh, which follows that E local is indeed different from E as we have suspected. The former, former field is in fact larger than the latter. So the molecules are more effectively polarized than our earlier discussion have indicated. Equation 8.30 is known as the Lorentz relation. So you may be asked to derive this Lorentz relation in the examination. The difference between E which is known as the Maxwell field and the Lorentz field E local may be explained as follows. The field E is a macroscopic quantity and as such is an average field, the average being taken over a large number of molecules, equation 8.6. Uh, it is this field which enters into the Maxwell equations which you will recall are used for the macroscopic description of dielectric media. In the present situation, the field E is constant throughout the medium. On the other hand, the Lorentz field or the local field is a microscopic field which, in, which fluctuates rapidly within the medium. As the figure indicates, this field is quite large at the molecular sites themselves and hence the molecules are more effectively polarized than they would be in the average field. Uh, now let us calculate the dielectric constant. The polarization according to equation 8.23 and 8.16 is given by <coughs> this equation, equation 8.31, which when used in conjunction with equation 8.30 derived above yields P is equal to N alpha over 1 minus N alpha over 3 epsilon naught into E. The relation between P and E supersedes the earlier one, equation 8.16, uh, and we note that fact. We note the fact that denominator being less than unity contributes to the enhancement of polarization. The enhancement is due to the local field correction. So when the result 8.32 is substituted in equation 8.16 and 8.17 one finds the following expression for the dielectric constant equation 8.33, uh, which is the relation we have been seeking. It is 
generalization of equation 8.18 when the local field correction is taken into account in cases in which the molecules concentration well we don't talk about this topic okay equation 8.30 is frequently used uh, rewritten is frequently written rewritten in this form uh, which is referred to as the clausius mosetti equation so this equation is also very important and you may be asked to derive this equation in the examination we can also write uh, this equation as m over rho epsilon r minus 1 over epsilon r plus 2 bracket n a alpha over 3 epsilon naught which shows that the polarizability alpha may be determined from the measurable quantities m rho and epsilon r. So this equation is useful in the sense that <coughs> <coughs> the quantity m can be measured experimentally from this equation. Okay, so that's all about the dielectric properties of solids. If you are interested, you can go to the section 8.4 yourself, which will add to your knowledge, but for the subject matter being covered, this is sufficient. So I would stop here, and you must go through these pages. You can get support from Kittle as well. Uh, because some of the derivations in Kittles are are done more uh, clearly than Ali Umar, but okay, so that's all uh, from today's lecture and uh, in, in our next uh, week we will start the other properties of solids. Okay, thank you very much.